Hey everyone, Dr. Robson. Uh, in my last video, we extracted these two wisdom teeth, uh, infected wisdom teeth, and I said that in the next video, we're gonna be restoring this lesion here between the lower left first and second molars. So that's what we're gonna do now. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you some photos from the case and then we'll get into the clinical footage. There's the preps, matrixing, and then restored. So we'll start with um, a mandibular nerve block with articane and a long buckle nerve block to get the buccal gingiva. And then we'll put a rubber dam on. And we'll get started with the prep. I'm gonna zoom in there um, with a KS1 burr on a high speed. And decided that we would, uh, you can see the decay there, would prep the three six to completion and then decide what we wanted to do in terms of the order of restoring. Little ways to go there, still some refinements to make. We'll inspect again, still a little bit of decay we can probably <clears throat> stand to remove. I think that photo is actually taking earlier on in the process, but we'll make sure that the DEJ is nice and clean. And then we'll use a flame to remove any sharp edges from the interproximal surfaces and then just feather the interior side of the prep with a large round diamond to make sure that there aren't any sharp line angles and then that's complete that 36 do so we decided that we would just go ahead and prep the 37 and then put a band on the 37 and then restore the 36 with a sectional so just removing the decay with a ks1 And actually, I was, as I was watching this, I figured that this type of case that we probably could have even done as a class five, like just the mesial surface, because we had access to it. But there's some program to doing occlusal access, so didn't consider it at the time. There's the three, seven, mostly prepped, a little bit more decay to scoop out with the slow speed. And then we'll refine with the high speed to make nice smooth edges of the prep. <clears throat> and then, like I say, we decided that we would, there's the two preps pretty much, pretty much ready to restore. Decided that we would just put a Toffelmeyer on the three seven and then restore the three six conventionally. I've done a couple of cases where I tried to do these concurrently, but it never works. You never, I never personally end up with a satisfactory contact and I always kick myself and wish that I had just done them separately. So it's pretty much all I do now. So there's a three, seven matrix with a Toffelmeyer. We'll etch for five seconds, rinse thoroughly, dry mostly, and then bulk fill with Equia Forte. And then we'll pack it down we'll leave it for five minutes and then we'll come back and finish the contours of the three seven before we work on the three six do the gross reduction with a large round and then the finer reduction with a carbide and then the matrix band obviously didn't have perfect adaptation to the mesial wall so we'll just use a flame to round and smooth it off. Since we have good access to the proximal surface, we're actually just gonna apply our Equia coat. And now we're ready to restore the three, six DO. So a sectional, <coughs> excuse me, stabilizing wedge, separator ring, and then I'll give the separator ring a good shake. And then there's the three, six matrix and ready to restore. I'm going to put another wedge in from the buckle because I guess I wasn't happy with the gingival adaptation of the matrix band. Um, anyway, going to etch five seconds, rinse dry, and then fill it up with Equia Forte. We'll give it five minutes to set, pack it in five minutes to set, 
and then we'll finish it off as we did the first one and those are pretty much good to go and then we would have uh extracted the three eight after uh after this and the two eight 